All right, welcome back to the Dynamic Duo. In the first segment, we covered Chad and Jeremy, and sticking with the 60s pop theme, we've got a very special guest uh, for you this evening. On the phone is the great Ian Whitcomb. He's from England. He has a Scottish name. He's studying now in Ireland, and one of his subjects is American history, and he's making an American tour to appear on Hollywood and Go-Go. This is the sporting song of the sporting life. Welcome, Ian Whitcomb. Whitcomb had a string of hits in the 1960s. Some of those titles include This Sporting Life. I'm getting tired of just hanging around. I'm gonna get married and settle down. And this sporting life is gonna be the death of me. Uh, you turn me on. Where did Robinson Crusoe go with Friday on Saturday night? They built a little hut, lived there till Friday, but Saturday night it was shut. And where did Robinson Crusoe go with Friday on Saturday night? As an authority on pop music of the early 20th century, Whitcomb has published several, several books on the Tim Pan Alley era, appeared in documentaries on the subject, and he even produced Mae West's 1972 album, Great Balls of Fire, and is credited uh, with reviving the ukulele two years before Tiny Tim came onto the scene. Mr. Whitcomb, thanks for being on, on the show. Well, thank you, and thank you for that introduction. When did you uh, first become interested in um, performing music? Uh, with, with music, oh, well, I, I've, I've sung old songs ever since I was, I don't know, ever since I could talk back in England. And uh, because we grew up on these songs at my, in my home, everybody sang these old songs like I'm Henry VIII, I Am, and all these, all these songs. And um, my father played the piano, and um, so I've, I've sung and performed songs either on the piano and later when I was in my teens on the ukulele ever since I can remember. Great. And um, this is kind of, this is, I know this is not a question that would be easy to uh, sum up quickly, mm. but I imagine it was pretty crazy. I mean, what was it like being part of the 60s pop scene? Well, I loved it. I was only a, a, a hot teenage idol for a very short time in the summer of 1965, but I enjoyed it, every minute of it while it lasted. And um, uh, just chronologically, I just to fill you in, or you know, but your viewers may not know, that I was a student at Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland, uh, in 1965, um, when I was also making records in Dublin. And um, one of those records, recordings, which is called This Sporting Life, which we made in Dublin, became a West Coast hit. And it actually got on the national charts as well. And because of the success of that, I came across to Hollywood and did all the television shows that you can watch on YouTube. Just go up there and put in the name Ian Whitcomb and you can see me in 1965 singing this sporting life. But anyway, while I was out there, they, rele they released a song that we also recorded in Dublin, which had no title. It was just a song with panting and breathing and orgasmic sounds in it. And eventually it was called You Turn Me On and that shot up into the <laughs> top ten. And it reached number eight in July 1965, and that was really, to get back to your question, the peak of my rock and roll career. I appeared at the Hollywood Bowl on, in July, just before my birthday, with um, the Kinks and the Rolling, uh, not Rolling Stones, but I, I did do shows with them, but in that show it was the Beach Boys, the Kinks, uh, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs, and all these names that people have forgotten, but they were big at the time. And, uh, and I went on, and the, the girls screamed, and some of the boys, and, um, and I went on tours with uh, the Dick Clark tours, and with uh, Chad and Jeremy, as I said, and with Peter and Gordon, and Tom Jones. And it was great. I mean, for a few months before I took my finals in, in Dublin, which was, that, that was in October, I led the life of a teenage, a teenage sensation, an, an idol. And I enjoyed it all. You know, for that short time, it didn't last long. Now, uh, Ian, you are left-handed, correct? Yep. Now, I'm, I'm left-handed as well, and I play the guitar. Um, I've heard yep. it was pretty hard back in the 60s to get left-handed instruments. What was that like for you? Well, I didn't play. I mean, when I played the ukulele, I picked up the ukulele uh, 
I'd learned at my cousin's house in England that I picked up the ukulele. I didn't restring it. I played it. I played it the right-handed. You know, I was playing it left-handed, but I right. didn't. I didn't restring it left-handed. So we had to. Set... So I'm playing it upside down. Right. Like Jimi Hendrix, but except he didn't play the ukulele. But I'm playing the whole thing upside down, so I had to learn all the chords myself. Right. And I don't know about you, but I'm completely left-handed, so my yes, whole I am brain too. is switched. I mean, I have, you know, I can't do a thing with my right hand. Yeah. And and on top of being left-handed uh, in playing instrument, I'm also, when I was growing up, and I still, to a certain extent, have a, have a stutter, and that is associated with being left-handed. And I was never good at things like mathematics. I was, I was, I'm more instinctive. Me neither. I can't do math to you save know. my life. <laughs> I can't do math to save my life either. <laughs> well, it's it's a pity because uh, you know I'm a musician and apparently math and music are interconnected. And if, you know, if you understand, we call it maths uh, with an S, I think. But, um, they're interconnected, and I've I've always found it very hard to read rhythms. I mean, I can play syncopation. I play the piano. I've always syncopated, but it's very hard for me to work out the maths of 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 the in the bar when you're writing music down. I mean, I can do it now, but, but um, it's just very tough being left-handed. But the advantages are one tends to be more artistic. One tends to be able to make these leaps, um, these these mental uh, leaps. In other words, we don't go through the process of deducing anything or logic. We suddenly find the truth, you know? <laughs> lefties, and, uh, lefties are always right. It's great, you know, so, so that's what I do. I'm completely nice. emotional. Right. Um, now, I don't, we only have a few minutes left, and I don't know if this is out of line, but I don't know if you have your ukulele near you. No, no, no don't. I, no? no? Yeah, I don't. I've actually got to play it tonight. I'm going to a show tonight to play cowboy songs with my ukulele, song. but I haven't got it near me. Why? So now, now it's not anywhere near you? Uh, well, there is. Well, actually, there is one. I could, it would take me a few seconds to get it, yeah. But, I mean, how, how, how would you hear it? I'd have to lie the phone down on the... Well, I, I think we'd still hear it. I don't know. I mean, it's up well, to you. If, you. if you're not comfortable, if no, you're not can comfortable. You wait, if you can, can you wait about 10 seconds? Yeah, yeah. we got it. 10 seconds. Yeah, to hear okay, a song from you. Here yes. we yeah. go, right now. Well, okay. worth it. <laughs> I think that was more than 10 seconds, wasn't it? No, that's <laughs> no, fine. That was good. Anyway, here's, I'm just opening the the case of my old Martin ukulele, the one that you can see on YouTube if you go up and watch me play. Uh, I bought this in 1968, and there, there it is. You can hear it, yeah. Excellent. What did you want to hear? Um, well, actually, I was thinking uh, maybe uh, where did Robinson Crusoe go? Okay, Fat Ants, hang on, I'm going, to put, I'm going to lay the phone down on a dictionary, okay? Okay. And I'll go straight into it, hang on. There we are. Oh that's my god, that's that was terrific. that was so well, great. I'm seriously, I'm sitting here with the biggest. I was sitting there with the biggest <laughs> grin on my face during that. Well, uh, that's uh, that was. Uh, you got a song for free. I norm normally charge quite a lot of money, but that's the, the uk That's my Martin ukulele, which has got a beautiful sound. We've used it in lots of recordings, and it's been heard on film soundtracks. It's, it, it was used in a Peter Bogdanovich film, and it accompanied Kirsten Dunst and. Uh, Jeremy Irons and so forth. So yeah. it's a lovely ukulele. As I said, you can watch it if you go to YouTube and punch in the title and "Do I Love You." You can see my wife Regina and myself singing that song. Oh, that's really nice. Well, listen, I could we could talk all night, and you've well the knowledge. I please our listeners, you know, look up Ian Whitcomb. Uh, as you can see, he's uh, is a gem. He's still around and he's doing his thing. Um, and I'll. Ian, thank you so much for being on the show. Okay, really guys, I'll it. say goodbye, and I'll put down the phone and, and stay in touch. All right. Okay, excellent. I'll, I'll send you Chad uh, Stewart's email. Okay, thanks. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Cheers. All right. Well, Justin, that was a great interview. I mean, that's, I think that's the first, a call-in 
performing live. Yep, calling performing live. Uh, piece of you know piece of history right Whitcomb. there. Ian Whitcomb. Uh, we've got to wrap up. They're right. freaking out in the back. So yeah, they're it's, having uh, conniptions. Yeah, they're having uh, conniptions. Right. As so. always, I am your host Eric Jackman, and I'm Justin Martell. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night. Zah. <laughs>